Hey everybody, Jason here. So I'm continuing to work on my off-grid tiny cabin and in the last video I did the insulation and vapor barrier inside as well as tested a heat source, a temporary heat source. In today's video I'm gonna get started on the interior paneling. So with this step of the build it's more to do with aesthetics over function and I want to have the interior of the cabin uh, still look cabiny and at the same time I was thinking that I don't want it to be overboard with the cedar paneling. So what I'm choosing to do is do the two end walls with a thin plywood, a paint grade plywood, so that I can you know give it a coat of paint and uh, I think that'll give a uh, good contrast if I do the cedar paneling on the two side walls. So the plywood I'm using is 1 8 inch thick and it's a poplar veneer. So cutting out the side walls is definitely the most challenging part. I've got the arched roof, I've got the angled out walls. There's a lot of different angles to consider and you know it's going to take a lot of monkeying around to get a decent fit. I'm expecting there to be some gaps here and there along the ceiling and along the walls, but I think that the cedar paneling will cover up the gaps at the side corners. As far as the ceiling goes, I'll probably just add some kind of molding like a quarter round or a quarter cove and that'll just cover up any gaps. All right, so I've got the plywood up in place, but now I've got a bit of an issue. There's gonna be a delay with getting the cedar paneling for the side walls. Because of COVID-19 and lockdowns, unfortunately the mill I deal with, they are behind schedule. And actually when I was there, it the place looked pretty much empty with no wood. So um, anyway, yeah, I'm not too sure how long the delay is gonna be, but I can't continue yet. So I'm going to continue this video when I get the wood and yeah, hopefully it won't be too long. All right. Okay. So I've got the wood and yeah, it's been, <laughs> it's been a few weeks, but anyway, I've got it and now I can finally continue and get back to work. It's a pretty cold day out here. I've got that uh, little heater running to warm it up a little bit. I don't know if it's really going to work. I'm going to be coming in and out. Doors going to be opening and closing. But anyway, we'll see how it goes. Um, yeah, so like I said, we've got the paneling on the side. So what I need to do now is I need to measure end to end on both sides because I imagine there's going to be some discrepancy between the lengths of the side walls. So I'm going to measure both sides and I'm going to measure the top of the wall near the ceiling as well as at the bottom. I'm hoping that it's the same. Again, I think likely it won't be. Uh, I'll probably have to measure as I go. Um, if I'm lucky, then it'll be the same length and I can just cut up a bunch of wood and haul it down here and go. But most likely it's gonna be cutting one or two pieces, bringing them down, installing them, going back and continuing. So. Yeah, I'm not going to delay any more by, you know, sitting chatting, but I'm looking forward to having this done. Okay, so I'm back out in the shop now and now is the time for me to start cutting everything. So. I guess it's pretty straightforward. Tools I'm gonna to be using are my miter saw, my chop saw, and yeah, I'll use the jigsaw at the start as well to cut out some notches around the beams in the ceiling. Um, what else? Oh, I also, I'm gonna to need to plane off the tongue off the top piece. I could leave it, but I think it'll look kind of funny. It'll look a lot better if I trim off that uh, the tongue and then uh, maybe even a little bit more than the tongue because uh, the profile has the tongue that sticks up and then it's got a chamfer on either side. Camera just shook and I have no idea why. <laughs> um, anyhow, so yeah, the profile. So basically I want to have that profile up as tight to the ceiling as I can get it. Um, 
if there ends up being a gap, then I'll put some, again, some like cove or bead type of molding just to cover up any gap between the wall paneling and the ceiling. Uh, but the closer I can get it, the better. And if I can get it up snug, then that's great. So yeah, so I'm gonna def definitely take off the tongue and to do that, I'm just gonna use a hand planer. Okay, so I'm about halfway done the first wall and I think it's coming along all right. Um, I wanted to stop for a minute and just explain why I did the end walls first. Well, for the first reason is the obvious one, it's that I couldn't get the paneling and, you know, I had to do the end walls or I could have waited and done the end walls later, but I wanted to just move it along. So did the end walls first. But the other reason is that when you're running paneling like this, um, if it's going to be open, uh, that is if I don't put trim in the corner, uh, you always want to do the side, how do I explain this best? Basically, if you're sitting or standing at the end of the wall, whatever wall you're most likely going to be standing at more frequently, that's the end that you want to do last because uh, otherwise you'll have a gap. Let me see. So you can imagine, so right now I've got the end wall here and then my side walls come up to it. Well, when I'm standing on the inside, I'm looking into the corners, right? And so I don't want to see the rough edge. And so I put uh, the side here uh, in last so that I hide this corner. And you can see if I move this side the other way, then you end up with the rough edge facing you, okay, rough. You know, obviously it would be trimmed, but uh, yeah, this is just the way you do it. So uh, by putting the, the side on first, then I'm basically looking into this flat edge, right? I see the nice, nice line of the side wall, and then it ends with the end wall. Whereas this way, I would see my end wall and then I would see the gap and then my side paneling. Okay, so one side is done. Now, you probably see I've got a gap on the bottom. That's okay, it's gonna get covered up by all of the inside window trim. I wanted to leave some space in case I ever have to pull the window out. I don't want the window to be tight with the inside framing at all. Yeah, anyway, it's coming. So, I think that 
you get the idea of this. I'm gonna stop filming now just so that I can get the camera and tripod out of here, give myself a little bit more space to work and just focus on hammering out the other side, all right? So anyhow, if you like the video, please give it the thumbs up, leave a comment, and if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe, okay? Thanks for watching.